so thus far we we have explored the computation of elasticity in the case where where your variables are not in log form now what happens if for example instead this regression here has log y and there is log x like that where log is the natural logarithm of y and natural logarithm of x now as you know from our previous discussion the the a slope coefficient here is actually measuring the change in log y over the change in log x now this this ratio here is the same as what you see here if i remove these two hundreds there if i remove these two hundreds there just remove them and i'm left with the relative changes these are relative changes you see here so so what is happening is that this is the relative change in y over the relative change in x so this is y2 minus y1 over y1 or alternatively if you are using the elasticity formula so it's y2 minus y1 over the average of y2 and y1 you see that and you do the same thing for x so once you multiply the numerator by 100 and the denominator by 100 you have arrived at this that means then this coefficient here is directly an elasticity okay so then this is just your elasticity there's nothing to calculate here it's just knowing that if both variables are in logs then the coefficient of the explanatory variable is a measure of the elasticity of y to changes in x okay so let's try to estimate that <coughs> using the using these two variables now they are in log form so we come here say regress we pick our dependent variable then we pick our explanatory then we say okay so this is the slope coefficient as you can see now the answer there is 6.48 that's the answer we have so now our beta head is actually equal to 6.48 and this is the elasticity so what it means is if x increases or let's use the word changes which covers both in english so it decreases changes by one percent by one percent then y changes by 6.47 in this case our y is real man balances so maybe let me use the actual terms man balances and my x there is real gdp real gdp by 6.47 percent on average okay so you are saying just a one percent change in gdp would, would trigger a 6.47 percent change in Roman balances that means Roman balances are very very elastic to changes in, in, in national 
income in real national income okay now how how far is what we just got there where the variables are not in logs from what we have when they are in logs you can see that the answers are very close okay so this one is called a constant elasticity model because it doesn't matter where you are on the curve the elasticity will always be beta 1 okay that's wonderful whereas this one for this one the elasticity actually um, decreases along the demand curve okay um, that is here along the Riemann uh, balances um, curve wonderful so let's try to look at a situation where only y is in logs so that we actually have a model like this how does how will this situation change again okay. so now what is happening here is that our numerator is a relative change let me try to construct that for you so that you can see what I'm talking about. Let's see if our fraction then. I will try to put a good fraction for you to see. Um, let's see if a bracket there. Um, I will have a half and then I'll open a bracket also. Now what we have here is our y2 minus our y1. And we are dividing this by y2 plus y1. Okay. So this is actually a relative change. Um, <coughs> okay, let's okay let's leave that beta there we will deal with it but what is happening in the denominator is because this is an absolute change this is a relative change so here you only have one minus sorry let's put a bracket you only have x2 minus x1 that's all you have there is no divided by there you see that so now this actually in the final analysis if we take it very carefully will look like this so you don't have to worry about calculating these things here what i'm doing is just to help you see the process that's going on so this is the average of y okay so essentially that's what you have on the numerator so what is missing for this thing to become an elasticity is to divide here by bar x and so once you divide by bar x then you must and you know that you are dividing by a fraction so it inverts the divisor that that ends us with the bar x on the numerator you see that so so what is actually missing in all this for this expression here to be an elasticity is just to multiply it by x by x bar so that's all you need if you multiply it by x bar it becomes an elasticity so let's put our x bar there now this expression is a semi-elasticity once we multiply it by x it is now an elasticity like the one we calculated here so now this should be modified by multiplying it by bar x so bring bar x here uh oh what's happening all right let me just by x okay 
so that's what we want so you just multiply this coefficient by by x the answer you get is an elasticity so now what is our beta 1 what is our by x our by x we computed it the other time it was where is the data it was 19150 so let's write it there 19150 by so now let's estimate the regression in which this one is in logs gdp is not then do that quickly so now that's regression our dependent is in logs that's fine and our explanatory is not in logs which is this one then we say okay so you see now we have 0, 0.0 so let me just take it as it is then and bring it here all right so let's see what answer we get the answer we get there will be an elasticity so you, we are saying this is 1950 by point how many zeros do we have 1,2,3 Yes, 33, 73, 82. And our answer is 6.46. Do you see that? Now, how far away is it from what we got earlier on? In the other question, we got 6.47. 6.48 in the other we got 6.08 in this one we got 6.46 do you see that so that's the elasticity in this case now in the same token we can also find elasticity in the case where it is x that is in logs okay like this now what that means is in this particular case our numerator is the one that is changing in absolute terms but this one is a relative change so let me try to interchange these things I'll cut this one and put it here then I'll cut this one and put it up there and then change this to one change this to one then change this to x then change this to x then change that to x then change that to x okay and of course these two also need to be changed but now i will not worry about okay let me let me do that change there's a technicality i want to explain okay and then i take this to the numerator in fact i should just pick this one cut this and put it here okay um Let's change that to x, that to x, and that is x, okay. So, so what you see here is that for this thing to become an elasticity, there's just one thing that is missing. The, denom the numerator is an absolute change. It's just a movement from y, y to y2. But we are not dividing it by its average for it to become a relative change. Whereas the denominator is expressed as a relative change. So what do we do if we want to, to, 
to get an elasticity, we need to divide this by y bar. But if you di if you divide a numerator by something else, we know that its denominator will become part of the overall denominator. Because what is happening here is something like this. Here you are dividing by a fraction, so you invert it and x becomes part of the numerator and you are left with x2 minus x1 here. But here you have, you already have y2 minus y1 over y bar. The y bar becomes part of the denominator. That, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. So here we will end up having y bar. Let's 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 take y bar and put it here. Uh, this will take me lots of time now. Okay, here I will have a y bar. Let's see if I can copy that and put it here. Uh, I can't. Okay, let me just write in words y bar. I want to save myself time. And then my x bar is in the numerator. Okay. So what has happened is this is now a complete elasticity formula which you see here. x bar is on top, y bar is below. So if the y bar is below, what we have done is we have just divided this thing here which is that which is your beta one we have divided it by y so here we are going to say times one over y bar okay. so this means if you want to find the elasticity of real man balances to changes in real income where your real income is in logs but your real money balances are not you just have to divide it by the mean of real money balances and then that will give you the elasticity in question so now let's try to to do that um let's estimate that regression very quickly i don't want to go over 20 minutes here regression our dependent variable is not in logs but our explanatory is in logs like, like that then we say okay the answer we get here is this number so I want that number here and I'm going to divide this number by the mean of y. The mean of y is 7382. So this is over 7382. Whatever I get from here is the elasticity. So we have 44973.6 divided by 7382. And your answer is 6.09. Do you see that? So we had 6.48, 6.46, 6.09, and here we have 6.08. So, so these are the different elasticities you get from different uh, regressions, okay? Each, each functional form will give you a different elasticity coefficients, but generally they will be very close to each other. So these are some of the things you should be able to do because they are very, very useful. Like in the previous tutorial you had, I asked you to calculate the elasticity um, of the income elasticity of demand, I think, and this is the kind of knowledge you should be utilizing. I will stop here.